Hey folks, my name is Dennis and this is another video in my series about Japanese internment. I know, what a great and fun topic to just talk a whole bunch about. So who are the no-no boys? Well, they were interned Japanese. And before going forward, I'm going to be using the terms interned, internee, prisoner interchangeably, as well as concentration camp and internment camp interchangeably. All of these things basically mean the same thing. Anyway, where was I? Uh, yeah. The no-no boys. No-no boys was a term used to describe enlistment age men who answered no to question 27 and 28 of the loyalty questionnaire. In 1943, the War Relocation Authority conducted this survey in an attempt to segregate the loyal and disloyal Japanese people in concentration camps. The loyal Japanese men also had the option to enlist in the military as a form of freedom. Question 27 and 28 read, are you willing to serve in the armed forces of the United States on combat duty wherever ordered and Will you swear unqualified allegiance to the United States of America and faithfully defend the United States from any and all attack by foreign and domestic forces and forswear any form of allegiance or disobedience to the Japanese emperor or any other foreign government power or organization? A very large portion of people refused to answer or answered no, no. Around 12,000 out of the 78,000 people who were over the age of 17. These people were considered disloyal and sent to Tule Lake considered the harshest of concentration camps. The Nono Boys were often conflated with the Japanese draft dodgers, which is further conflated with the topic of the novel that I couldn't get in time, The Nono Boys, by John Okada. It was a mostly forgotten novel that was rediscovered in the 1970s. Now, while I think their answers were completely justified, why would you want to serve in an army for a country that forced you to be imprisoned? Many other interned Japanese did not feel the same way. The Nono Boys were pariahs at Tule Lake, and were still so even when they were released from internment. Everyone was still kind of caught up in the jingoism of the time and they were seen as traitorous. In 1977, at the dedication of a commemorative plaque at Tule Lake, Ben Takashita said, Up to 10 years ago, I would not have told anyone where I learned my Japanese, nor would I have admitted that I had been at Tule Lake as a no-no. He added that he now felt comfortable enough to admit that some of us were indeed no-nos and others were yes-yeses, and to agree that we were suckered into fighting against each other. That's going to be it for me today. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about social justice, topics, cultural history, and even some pop culture history, then please like, share, and subscribe. It really does help me out. If you'd really like to support the channel, please consider donating to my Patreon or my coffee. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you did, then you'd be on a roll call like these folks, my donors, Abby, Nicholas, and Psychic Dolphin Garage, as well as the cool kid, Jorge. Jorge is granted the status of cool kid because he donates at the $6.66 level. You can be just like Jorge if you donate at that level or higher. Just let me know if you want it. Be sure to check out my final video in this series next week when I discuss Fred Korematsu versus the United States. And as always, take care and goodbye.